Hey guys, Pat here, and welcome to my channel. This is my first ever proper amp repair video. I guess it's time to join the modern world, and there's no better way to do that than with this vintage 1966 Supro Thunderbolt. These amps were made by Valco for Supro, and there's also a airline version. The Supro is kind of the looker. These amps are fantastic, and they sound so amazing that people call them the Jimmy Page amp, even though Jimmy didn't actually play one of these. We'll get into that. These amps were sold as bass amps, 15-inch speaker. They don't make a very good bass amp, but they are awesome for guitar. The customer brought this in saying it's blowing fuses, so let's take a look together and see what's going on with it. You gotta love the simplistic beauty of this amp. Two knobs, volume tone, two input jacks, two 12AX7 preamp tubes, Jensen 15 inch speaker. This is your power transformer, speaker plug, output transformer is right under here. Two 6L6 power tubes, these are like the original RCAs. And this is the later version, so the Supro Thunderbolt was made from 64 to early 67, and the earlier ones have a tube rectifier. This is the later one with the solid state rectifier. Before we start working on this amplifier, let's eat. All right, let's get this sucker apart. Two screws on each side. Honestly, these amps are a real pleasure to work on. They're so simple. Disconnect the speaker and let's pull it out. Yeah. All right, let's take a visual here. So first thing I noticed, so we have a changed AC cable. Um, hmm. All right, I think I'm going to want to actually take this off of this lug and put it direct to the chassis. I have discharged this so nobody made comments. Um, it's been recapped. So I see new coupling caps here. I see new cathode bypass caps. I see a new F and T. I see a cheapy Ruby tube. Uh, I'm not crazy about that. And I'm not crazy about this original can where one of the sections is still in use so we're going to want to clean that up but first let's figure out why we're blowing fuses first thing i want to see is there a dead short from the plates center tap or first filter cap so our b plus set is right here off our rectifier ohm scale is this shorted and it is not if that was shorted that's going to tell me either i have a shorted power tube a short output transformer or this first filter cap now it doesn't mean when i power it on something's not going to short but unpowered we are okay so far visually so let's check these diodes this one here infinite 0.5 okay this one here oh short short it both ways there you go so here's why it's blowing the fuse you power it on this is the secondary AC of the power transformer, and that diode here is shorted, so you are going to blow a fuse with this shorted diode. So let's go to the schematic and take a look. So there are different schematics online, and of course the amp we're servicing is different than all the other versions, but that's okay, this is close enough. This is our AC in, our fuse, our power switch, our power transformer, and our rectifier. That's a bridge rectifier. And when we have a shorted diode to ground, it's like putting a wire directly to ground. So when we power it up, it's gonna pull a lot of current and blow that fuse. These are the filter capacitors. A is for our center tap and plates of the power tubes. B is the screen supply. C and D are for the preamp and phase inverter. And this is a power phase inverter. So let's go through the signal flow. So first we have two input jacks going through a very small capacitor into the grid of the first tube. Now, why they chose this very small capacitor 
And in fact, a lot of these capacitors, well, they're trying to actually cut a lot of the low end. And why would they do that in a base amp? Because this power supply and output section and speaker and baffle really can't handle a lot of extreme low end. So they're actually tuning this amp for a lot of mids and lower mids, which is why it sounds the way it does. It wouldn't make a good bass amp if they just had way too much bass and it was just rattling the heck out of it. So it's actually kind of smart to eliminate some of that low end to kind of give the false appearance that it's a good bass amp. Again, we're trying to get into the mind of these engineers in 1964. But anyway, our signal flow comes into the grid and comes out the plate into our volume control. And then this is our tone control. And then here in our phase inverter, this comes through here, goes into the first power tube. And then it's a power phase inverter, so this comes down into here. And this is our output that's out of phase, is fed into this tube. And then the two out of phase signals are coming out here, much more current now, into the output transformer and to our speaker. I'm also going to notate that we have a cathode resistor. So this is a cathode biased amp. Now, a lot of people could mod this and you can put a capacitor here and that would give you a little more output and bass response. But again, I've done that and I like how it sounds without the capacitor and the customer likes how it sounds, so that's what's important to me. So we're not changing nothing. So we're gonna get all four diodes out of here. Now maybe not everyone is short it, but they're like 20 cents, and it's best practice to change them all. Just be aware of the orientation. This one looks springy. <laughs> And solder in these diodes. There's a dog running upstairs. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a little garden upstairs. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to attach the AC ground to the chassis and not to this janky, riveted old terminal. So the best thing that we're going to do is we're going to scrape the metal a little bit where we want to put the ground. I'm going to put it right here. This helps the solder stick. And this is where I use a vintage iron. Okay, this is the tool for this job. This is a giant vintage iron. It gets incredibly hot, and believe me, I'm actually being extremely safe. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat up the chassis. Pliers, push it down. I know that this FNT is new because I have the other technician's invoice. So I'm gonna elect to keep it in. However, this loosey goosey ruby in this section that's still being used in the original can, they have to go. I have some options here. I can always mount the caps over here in this terminal strip. I can add a terminal strip here and mount the caps here. I can also mount the terminal strip here and drill a hole. And no one would see it back there, but I'm not really jazzed about doing that. Or I can loosen this nut here on the original can. I can install a terminal strip and I can put my capacitors here. I also like that because I can use the original ground that Valco used for the caps. I think that's the move. Don't forget your spaghetti. I like to insulate the leads. It's just neater. Okay, gonna drop this in here, but first put a little RTV on here. Keep it secure, not a lot. Wanna put the value side of the cap up so you can read it.
on second thought, we are gonna replace this cap. I just don't like how it's mounted and I don't really have long enough leads to secure it the way I wanna secure it. Okay, drop this down in. So welcome to Amp Repair. We've spent all this time and I still haven't even gotten into checking out a lot of the key components, the tubes. I mean, we're just making it right. Gonna clean up this AC cable a little bit. Make it a little neater. Okay, time to do a little cleaning and servicing. Okay, we're getting about 37 watts out of this thing. There's still a few more service issues, but we finally get to listen to it. It's sounding pretty awesome. Here's Jimmy Page using his Supro. He loved it in the studio and used it on the first two Zeppelin records heavily. It's not a Thunderbolt. It's a 1690T Coronado. His was heavily modified with a 12-inch speaker and gain mods. These Supros from this period have a beautiful print to tape and are great for blues and rock. I also wanted to mention the reason why we didn't change the electrolytic can out is because we would have had to have had that custom made for us. The client was in a hurry to get this into a studio for tracking, so we went with discrete capacitors. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe. Now let's take a listen to how this Thunderbolt sounds. <laughs>